Take a look at this. This is a film set, and there's 30 plus people on screen right now, and they're all making a commercial. But why do you need all these people to make something that only lasts 15 seconds? By the end of this video, I'm gonna explain to you exactly why every single role is pivotal and why just taking away one is gonna make the rest of the team strong. First, let's break down all the departments into eight unique categories. Some people say there's more, some people say there's less. I don't care, this is my video. We're gonna go with eight. Above the line crew are the big shots. These are the people who shape the project early on before the project starts. But I think it's gonna make more sense to you when we actually cover the roles in a bit. The production team are the one that's responsible for all communication and logistical planning for the project. If you don't have a production team, this is what it looks like. That's why you need me. Without a production team, there is no life on set. It is dead. You really need these people there to move the needle along and make sure that the production actually happens. The funny thing about the director department is that the director is not in it. <laughs> Whoa! The director department is actually for the assistant directors. Arguably the most important parts of the project, don't tell sound, the camera. The camera department are the ones responsible for assembling and taking care of its many parts throughout the shoot. The sound people are responsible for capturing the best quality audio. And I'm talking about the environment, even dialogue too. But it's worth noting that most of the positions found in audio are actually not on set. Rather, they're in the editing suite. You ever watch a commercial and you say to yourself, dang, that kitchen looks dope. Or, ooh, that hamburger looks really delicious, but you really know that it's crusty in real life. Thanks to the art department, everything looks beautiful. They're the ones that build, design, and populate the scene. I mean, without an art department, take this scene, for example. You have the great gentleman, a guy going around the world, capturing mystic ingredients, and he's in this gorgeous area with fog. There's lemongrass, there's pineapples. Without an art department, you just have some guy walking around. That's why it's so important to have these people on set. They make the shots beautiful. Grips are the ones who are responsible for rigging the camera in interesting places and manipulating its movement. Electros are the ones responsible for setting up the physical lights and all of its electricity and power needs. Electros also move the lights around over the course of the day and this is critical to the project because the lighting at the end of the day is what determines the look and feel of the scene. We could be here all day. We still haven't covered special effects, transports, crafty, locations. All these positions are quite project specific and depends on the scope. For the most part, you're gonna see them when the project asks for it. The other ones, on the other hand, you're gonna see more often than not. We've now covered the departments. Let's talk about the roles. At the top of the production department is the producer. This position is so widely misunderstood. Really, at the end of the day, the producer does two things early on. They get the job and they hire the top level crew. So getting the job means that they either go to a company and they successfully sell them on an advertising campaign, or this person's a superstar and the company comes to them and says, hey, we wanna work with you, producer campaign. Once they have the green light, the producer then hires the above the line crew to get the ball rolling. And now we are launched into pre-production. One of the first hires is the unit production manager. It's like the first name you see on almost every single movie credit. The unit production manager or the UPM is the one that's responsible for all budgeting, logistical planning, hires, and all legal requirements. Think of a lawyer who's so in touch with the law that they know all these loopholes to move around things. A UPM is that person in the world of film. Oh yeah, we got permits. We got permits. They know the labor laws, they know how the unions work, they work with all the different agencies and they know their expectations. So a UPM is the person that keeps everything steady. To help them out on set, they have a team of production coordinators that often help with all admin duties. So that's timesheets, pay sheets, and communicating with everybody. Then you have a team of production assistants. PAs are people who help all departments. They're the ones that have a very low responsibility in terms of what's expected from them. Therefore, it's a really great way to get into the industry if you have no prior experience. 
It does not require deep technical knowledge of film, cinema, how cameras work or anything, but it is essential to make productions run smoothly. Having a helping hand is huge. All right, let's talk about some juicy roles and no better one to start than the director. So the director is the one responsible for the creative vision of the project. They're the ones that you're gonna see on set talking with the actors to pull the best performance out of them. And then they're gonna be looking at the monitor to be confirming the shots that are being taken and they decide when it's time to move on. They work with every single department. They work with the script writers to ensure that what's being written is accurately portraying the vision of their project. They work with the production designer to make sure that the environment is believable and it feels lived in. They work with the editor to also ensure that the final product matches what they wanted. If it's anything creative, it's the director's word. The script writer is exactly what it sounds like. It's a writer or a group of co-writers that create the scripts. So that involves creating the dialogue, creating the actions, depicting the environments that things are gonna be taking place in, all these well before a camera is even taken out of the case. On set, if you see script writers, they're often working with the director to make sure that the script is being respected by the actors or they're in charge of continuity. A solid casting director does magic. Have you ever watched something and you say, damn, that actor was perfect for that role? Well, that's thanks to the casting director. A casting director speaks with the director and finds a look that they're going for. Then with that reference point, a casting director goes out into the wild, comes back with a list of candidates who are interested in the project, know everything about it, and they're ready to rock and roll. Once the actor is chosen and all proper paperwork is filled out, the casting director's job is done. It doesn't go past the pre-production phase. The first AD is literally the leader of the crew. They're your babysitter. They're the ones that tell you, be here at this time. Go do this thing. Go over there, be quiet, and don't come back. The assistant director, actually, when you think about it, they're more of a shepherd because they determine the pace of the shoots. They're the voice to listen to. They create the shooting schedule and they make sure that it's being respected. They have so many responsibilities and so many things to think of that they often have a team of assistant directors. So you have a second, third, even sometimes fourth AD. And when you have that many, the second AD is responsible for cast. Not always, but often. At the top of the camera department is the cinematographer or the director of photography or the guy that walks around with his hands up in the air. The cinematographer is the one responsible for choosing which camera is being used, what lenses are gonna be on that camera, and if there's gonna be a filter. They're also ahead of all lighting and rigging. So you're gonna see the cinematographer talking to the heads of grip and electric to make sure that the lighting and the camera is in its right places. This position requires a healthy balance of technical knowledge and creative integrity to pull off the shots. To help the cinematographer, you have a team of assistant cameras. The first AC is usually responsible for focus pulling, helping assemble the camera and changing its lens over the course of the day. A second AC is the one that does the marker and the third, fourth help the first. If you have multiple cameras, then you're gonna have ACs per camera. The camera operator is the person that operates the camera. Duh. This person is specialized in using different kinds of cameras and camera gear, including Steadicam, gimbal, and drones. On set, you're gonna see two different kinds of sound people. Location sound are the people who hold the boom mics and install the wireless mics on the actor. The sound mixer is the person who has the center console and they can see all the levels of audio being captured. During the scene, they can manipulate in real time where the audio is coming from. Clean audio is so essential for the viewing experience. And that goes for commercials, films, indie projects, whatever. You need to have good audio or no one's gonna listen. The production designer is the head of the art department. They're the ones that work with the director to build the world. They create the blueprints and the plans and that they hand off to builders and constructors that build the set. Think of the Batcave, for example. Someone had to design that. Someone had to think of all the intricacies of what a Batcave would look like. The art director is the next person underneath the production designer. They're the ones that realize the plans. They have a budget that they go out to buy props for and they populate the scene. To help them out, they have a team of set costumers and set designers that help them make everything work. They oversee the hair, makeup, and wardrobe departments. However, on big sets, you have people responsible solely for this. But for the sake of time of this video, we're grouping these departments into art. 
Grips are the technicians that rig the camera in interesting and special places. Take for example this shot, a top shot looking down at food being made on a kitchen counter. How do you get this camera on there? I don't know. Talk to a grip. They know everything about putting these cameras on these different mounts. Then you have gaffers and electros, and they are deeply, deeply knowledgeable about how lighting and power works. Lighting is so important that you can have the same scene lit a million different ways and you'll have a million different emotions. Every single grip and gaffer also has a best boy. Despite who it is, the name stays the same. Best boys are the assistants to the heads of grip and gaffing. We're not gonna be covering these roles in particular detail, mostly because you'll see them on big productions. Crafty, for example, is important because everyone needs to eat, but to have a dedicated team towards catering is something you'll only see on big projects. Then you have special effects and stunts. When these are happening and there's crazy and dangerous things going on, you need to have a dedicated team that knows how safety works under these conditions. They know how to keep you safe, when these crazy activities are going on. Next is transport. It's so important to have people come to and from set safely, especially after working long hours. Again, like Crafty, to have a dedicated team to this, you're looking at a big production. That wraps up all the departments that we're gonna talk about today. If you're on set, you may see more, you may see less positions, but in my opinion, these were the essentials. Thank you so much for watching the Drew Academy episode. My name is Evan. If you learned anything in this episode, please drop us a like. If you have any questions, leave a comment. Until the next time, guys, uh, be good.